you go to Auburn, and then there's this, Auburn bought Cam Newton. His daddy received this large monetary sum of money. Yeah. How, what would, so, so what's going on? How did this come about? Allegedly. Yes. You know, um... Before you so where where were the schools that you could have gone to? All, all, okay, you go to Auburn. So where after Blinn, mm-hmm. where were your choices? Oklahoma, Kansas State, Mississippi State, Auburn. Okay, it was a whole different recruitment process when I was in JUCO rather than coming out of high school. Okay, out of high school I was looking for gear and a good time. Right, by way of uh, you know. Female. The hostesses. Yeah. And Juco, oh, I was I was a millionaire mentality. How are y'all gonna incorporate me in this offense right. with my skill set? Right. Not what uh 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 Sam Bradford was doing, because that that ain't how I play the game. Right. I'ma bring a whole different element of this offense that you gotta start shaping some shit around. Kansas State the same way. Mississippi State, Dan Mullen. Right. And he knew Dan Mullen was the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach while I was at Florida. OK, so you so had some familiarity. Was, there was a lot of familiarity. And his plan was I remember Coach Mullen had called me. And at that time, me being the type of player I was, if a coach calling you, that means you don't did something. Yeah, you ain't go to study hall. Yeah. You didn't go to class. It was something. But this conversation was him telling me that he was going Mississippi State. To Mississippi State. It ended up being Mississippi State. He didn't tell me the, 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 the team. team. And I was saying to myself, well, he asked, he want me to consider transferring to Mississippi State. Right. But Coach, Ma- uh, um, not Malzahn, Coach Meyer, Meyer Urban, had to sign off on that. And I knew he wasn't going to sign off for that. So I had to go to junior college. Now, when you, when you say the things like, Going through the whole NCAA pay-for-play scandal. Mm-hmm. This is where I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to, to share this. If you really go back and you know the reports to what it said, it said two sources yes. said that Cam Newton and his father took money to go to Auburn. Those two sources was Dan Mullen and his wife, Megan Mullen. How do we get to that? I'll tell you. The day I was going to commit to Auburn at a junior college, it was neck and neck. Mississippi State. Mississippi State and Auburn. Mm-hmm. When I went to Auburn, as my mental was, was solely focused on success, I was trying to, I was really trying to play catch up to the Joe Haydens, mm-hmm. the Marquise Pounceys, the Aaron Hernandez, who were already in the league. Mm-hmm. And I said to myself, we came in together yeah, and in Florida, they already in the league. I'm trying to find the fastest way that I can get to the league. When I went to Auburn, they mentioned that they would have 22 seniors coming back. Mississippi State probably only had three to four. Mm. These are all different things as a 20-year-old college player and a 16, 17-year-old kid, you don't think that that's a big thing, but it really is. My whole determining factor was I wanted to go to a school that could get me to a BCS game. That was either the Tocitos Bowl, Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, whatever. Mm -hmm. If I went there in my tenure at that school, I was going top 10. Because I knew in order for us to get there, I would have to play my best form of football. When I was about to commit to Auburn, one of the things that my father told me that I had to do as a man, he said, you got to call Coach Mullen. And you have to tell him the decision that you're going to make. Be a man. He said, damn, Pop, like, why though? You know what I'm saying? He gonna find out sooner or later. Yeah, he gonna figure out a little tickle. <laughs> yeah, he, you know what I'm saying? He can read. <laughs> but that's how my father raised me. Okay. He said, son, you're gonna have to be a man. Right. And that's 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 where I always challenge society now. We need more men empowering men. Mm-hmm. Not boys raising boys. Correct. You dig what I'm saying? Yes, but I certain do. circumstances play out like that. But 
to that point, I put a lot of focus on my father. I said, Pop, you a man of God. If it's on your heart to wherever we're going to decide to go, that's where we're going to go. Man, my, at that time, we were exploring so many different things. And he came back, wrote it down on a sheet of paper. I, unlooked, I looked at it. It had Auburn on it. I said, I ain't going to even question it. That's where we're going. Okay. That day that I was going to make it public, I had to call Coach Mullen. I remember having a conversation. It was extremely awkward because when I called him, he answered, how's my quarterback doing? And I said, Coach, I just wanted to be a man and call you and, and tell you and uh, Miss Megan that I'm going to Auburn. And I didn't want you to hear it through the grapevines. I didn't want you to hear it on ESPN. I wanted to be a man and call you. And he asked me this question, how, but how, Cam? Like, you know I was going to do right by you, but we need you. And I gave him this quote, it was just too good to be true. Mm. Now, too good to be true for me right. was, you got 22 seniors. Right. They battle tested. Mm -hmm. I ain't going into a locker room with freshmen. These, they ready to win right now. They just need me to propel them to elite status. Mississippi State needed a, me and some, and I don't think Mississippi State garners the, the measure of recruits. Like, come on, it's, it's Mississippi State here. And still Mississippi State at that particular point in time. And I heard Miss Megan in the background. I was like, did he, did he commit? Did he commit? He's like, no. And then that's when I talked to her. I was like, man, I just apologize, but this is a business decision that I, I, I'm saddened that it, that it didn't work out. Mm. Had that conversation when I was 20. And I thought I was doing the right thing. So fast forward to the success going on at Auburn. First game we played Arkansas State. I think the next game or the first primetime game we had was versus Mississippi State. It was on a Thursday night. We ended up winning that football game. And I'm big on energy. I'm big on just posture and certain things. At the end of the game, I looked at him and I wanted, I wanted to shake his hand and say, Coach, man, appreciate you, man. Thank you. And it was a little iffy, though. Mm. You know, what the, what, the, what the hood teach you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my spidey senses was yeah. a little up. They were tingling. You, you he, on some, he, on some, he on some bull. You dig what I'm saying? I ain't really know what it was. His wife was there. We spoke. Condolences, man. Good luck for the rest of the year. You know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. The report came two weeks after that. And if you remember, it was two sources. Mm -hmm. It was Dan Mullen and his wife that created all this ruckus. Mm -hmm. Cam and his daddy took money. Yeah. Now, fast forward to now when it's becoming a big story. I remember after the game, we had another primetime game on Saturday night. We played South, South Carolina. Carolina. That was when the world knew who Cam Newton was. Another phone call by Coach, Coach Chiswick. And, and anybody who played at Auburn knew if, if somebody's calling you from a no-call ID, it's Coach Chiswick. That ain't a good call that you want to have. But I was in good standards, you know what I'm saying? We undefeated at that particular point in time. He said, Cam, I need to talk to you and your parents. Are your parents still in town? I said, yes, sir. I said, I need y'all to come to my office and we need to have a conversation. Cool. Boom, I'm thinking, you know, you about to just... Stay the typical. Man, you're doing an amazing right. job, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Y'all raised an unbelievable oh young man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's working out fine. Like, <laughs> I remember it. Look, it was me, my mom, and my dad, and Coach Chiswick sitting across from us. And, you know, Coach Chiswick, you know, hey, I just want to let y'all know it's about to be a report that comes out that a scandal uh, and the NCAA is about to do an investigation on you guys' family. So I'm looking around like, on who? For what? Say, uh, there's a report that you guys took money to come here. So I'm like, okay, cool. How much we talking? <laughs> like, boom. He said 180000 Looked at my mama. My mama looked at me. We bust out laughing. <laughs> 
I'm like, are you serious? Like, for real. We laughing. Coach Chizik ain't laughing. I was like, oh, you for real? So I'm saying to myself, <laughs> I'm looking at my mama. Mama, you got 180? Pop, you got 100? Like, whoa. well, I'm from, you can't hide that type of money. No, he ain't never seen a, <laughs> ain't never seen a thousand dollars, let alone 180 to 200,000. Right. That'd be hard to hide, <laughs> especially, man, in our house. But we go, man, I done found so much from PlayStations, the Sega Genesis, the all that that they tried to hide from us. I'm like, man, how? Who? Right. Who got it? It was it was a suspicion to us. Like, who got this money that y'all proclaiming us to have got? And he was just reporting. He was just like, listen, I don't know who did it or who got it, but the NCAA is about to open an investigation and uncover as much as they possibly can. Okay. And during that stint, from that week on throughout even the national championship, that burden was always on and I no longer was an amateur athlete. I had to operate as if I was a CEO. I had to operate and be stoic and, and be strong. And, and, and when somebody would ask, Cam, you all right? Yeah, 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 I'm good. No, good and well, I was suffering in silence. Nobody could, could, could go through what I went through. Not my family, not my teammates, not my coaches. Not only am I being investigated throughout the day, I'm trying to play the best form of football that I possibly can during game time. And I'm going through so much, I can't, I can't speak to them. I'm talking to my dad, I'm talking to my brothers, I'm talking to you know, my family, but they don't get it. They, right. they, 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 they there for support, but it's not like, we understand what you're saying. That's the only thing that they can say. And I'm saying to myself, bro, it's hard. We playing, after that, you got LSU, you got Arkansas, you got Georgia, you got all these, games and I'm like yo on top of that this is the greatest season that the U Auburn University has ever had you got Alabama mm -hmm. how are you doing this I was having an outer body experience in in my body like I'm like yo I'm surprising myself with the measure of focus that I had to go through and still that's what brought my family closer because even though I know, even though I knew, still to this day, nobody took money from it. That was just a grenade thrown into the crowd to just have a bitter person. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to my school, so he had to have taken some money to go to that school because we had already had a relationship. But I was thinking to myself, you didn't play me while you was at Florida. These are all things that I'm saying, like I seen your true self. Right. I didn't want to get burnt twice. So on top of that, these things are happening. And through it all, by the, like I say, by the grace of God, I was able to still perform at a high level. And my father jumped on that grenade. Knowing good and well, he ain't take no money. Knowing good and well, he said, look, how can we allow my son to play? Well, we're going to need somebody to take, the, to take this rap. My father said, without blinking, I, I take it. Paint me however you want to paint me. Right. I'll do it for my son. He going to be eligible to play? Cool. I'll take it. Well, Cecil, you can't, you can't come to no more games. And still to this day, it was told while during the Heisman ceremony, they said, I think it's best for you not to show up for that. I took that personal. And the person that meant the most, that had the greatest impact on Cam Newton, mm -hmm. the player, the man that he became at his, at his highest moment mm -hmm. to date, the man that meant so much to you couldn't be there to share it with you. I could not share the moment. I remember winning the Heisman ceremony, stuttering. I was nervous, but I, I didn't want to be there. I wanted to be with my dad. I wanted to be with my family because this was my opportunity to, to show my dad, like, Pop, to thank him. To thank him, but also my dad challenged me every day. Boy, that's not right, boy. You got to be a man. From I'm 7, 8, 12, 13, 15, 6, 17, still in college. So you got to be a man. That ain't no man. Take responsibility. Take accountability. This was, this was me showing him, Pop, I'm being a man, Pop. 
Look at me. Look at what you created, man. Man, it's us. This ain't just me. This ain't Cam Newton. This for the, our whole lineage. This is for the whole Newton name. This is what you created. Let me share that with you. Everybody was excited, but I, they stripped that from me. Right. But Archie Manning, that ain't no question. But if it's Lamar Ball, that's a problem. Mm. Deion Sanders, oh, he playing all oh, that with that. These are great forms of King Richard. Men who meant so much and that was trying to put their family in the best situation. Tiger Woods, father, that was these people. My father has did nothing wrong and was painted as a villain still to this day. He still ain't been back to Auburn. Truth be told. Do you get an opportunity to get back? To Auburn? Yeah, but I ain't never been back to the Heisman. Right. For what? They didn't care about my family at that point in time. Because if they knew we was telling everybody, like, 180,000, 200,000, you can't hide that. Not in my community. Not in my culture. You would have seen it in a car. You would have seen it in a house. Yeah. You would have seen it in a, a, a something. A, young. a business. The church. Something. They couldn't find nothing. And this was an investigation that took place for more than about three to five years. Nothing. But when I'm suffering and all everybody really cared is, are you all right? Can you play? I was ineligible for a day. And boy, whew, what we gonna do? I got eligible again. And now every, it put everybody at ease. Not knowing that, like, bro. Y'all at ease, I'm not at ease. Yeah, but I, I used those, what is it, 12 minutes? I used that 40 minutes or 42 minutes on Saturday to inflict what was being inflicted to me. Complete disregard to how I felt. And whoever I was playing, they was going to feel me. So you're seeing a lot of examples of me using my circumstance, not letting my circumstance use me. Right. Jimmy Clausen, Tim Tebow, Urban Meyer, the NCAA. Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen. Man, somebody got to pay for this. Right. And I'm doing, this is a peaceful protest, so to speak. <laughs> I ain't going off the rail and saying like, man, let me tell y'all, bro, y'all, y'all, y'all doing too much, NCAA. You call them a house, you know, people with reports of ESPN, all, everybody, CNN, like this was big news. Right. You don't care about my family. People were staking out on my house, asking like, did you do it? Going into stadiums where they disrespecting me by playing son of a preacher man. <laughs> like these are these are facts. Right. Oh, scam Newton. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Yes. This ain't it's a whole thing that people ain't thinking about what I went through. Right. And I'm telling you, like, bro, that ain't that's what I displayed there is no different than what an average black man or a black family goes through on a regularity. It may not be through sports, it may be through circumstance. Right. Mom working two and three jobs to provide single parent or the father is, is, is not around or he's trying to provide as best as he can. These are all uh, uh, trauma that I was lucky to use that trauma to put on my shoulder to say, I, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going, this is my way out. I ain't about to be no doctor. I ain't about to be no lawyer. I'm about to be a football player. And I don't care what my circumstance is, I got to perform and put that, compartmentalize that, put that away for these 42 minutes while I show the world I'm the best football player. The game, the Iron Bowl. Mm -hmm. You guys go down 24 nothing. That team is loaded. That's, that may be the best Alabama team ever. You guys are in Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. You fall behind 24 nothing. Yep. That was, you say Carolina put your, but that was the game. That was your, you know, say a Heisman moment, you had a Heisman game. The entirety of the game from the point that you were down 24 nothing, could really be your highlights and you don't need any others. Yeah. 
What's going through your mind? What's go, what, what's the team psyche at that point in time? You're in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. That's your chiefest rival. That's the that might be the greatest rivalry in in, in college sports. I understand Duke, North Carolina, yes. Ohio State, Michigan, but they're not in state. Yeah. And it's divided. You either love Alabama and hate Auburn. You either love Auburn or you hate Alabama. There is it no in between. No, it ain't no cousins. It, no, it's bad blood. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And I think Coach Chiswick did a great job leading up to that week because that always will be the game around Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And school's out. Right. That's just the first uh, uh, introduction to what professional sports will be. All we had to do was prepare for that game. You know, training table, workout, watch film, whatever. And he would give us speakers to talk about what that game was like. Now, me being at the University of Florida, I was a part of some rivalries, Georgia, Florida, Florida, Florida State, Florida, Miami. I witnessed all of them. They were rivalries, but the Iron Bowl is a little different. It's a different energy, <laughs> different energy. I remember going to the game and they had canceled our uh, Tiger Walk. Right. That's when you get off the bus but, and then you have your fans. And I asked, I said, why we don't got Tiger Walk? Simple question or simple answer was, it's just not safe. <laughs> Damn, we in college, I mean, this amateur sports, right? Mm -hmm. Man, we was approaching, you know, the stadium. The, the bus rocking. Bus right. <laughs> rocking. And I remember looking outside, it was a couple who had to be 70 plus. They flicking us off. <laughs> Damn, it's oh, grandma and grandpa on it. They all about it. Mima and them was flicking us <laughs> off. And I said, oh, it's that type of game. When we entered, or when I entered the stadium on the field, they throwing, you know, beer bottles and beer on it. Like, right. oh, it's that type of game. All right, I see what we got going. This disrespect is overload. We go down 24. I'm saying, okay, cool. We got to score before halftime, man. I'm saying to myself, bro, Cam. If you're going to do anything great, just going to cement your legacy right here. And dare I just make it all about me because we had unbelievable effort from Nick Fairley, mm -hmm. uh, the defense, um, Terrell Zachary, Darvin Adams, uh, Michael Dyer, uh, Lee Zemba. Like these guys were a part of that puzzle to get us to it. Now I got a lot of the credit but these were the unsung heroes, mm -hmm. too. And I just remember making it so personal, like, we, this ain't where we stop at. We got to keep going. Right. And as you know, being an athlete, that's what gives you that stamp of approval that we want to hear what your take was. Right. What was it like in the locker room? Did you have to grab somebody by their shoulder pads and say, we got 30 more minutes to impact the rest of our lives? What we going to do? I'm about to barbecue. You're going to get a plate? Let's rock and roll. Them type of stories you can't get by just reporting the news because it, it take a different measure of, of, of experience. And even though Travis Kelsey may be able to be talked to in this type of way, you can't talk to Shannon Sharp like that. Sometimes you don't even got to talk to him. You just got to look. Mm -hmm. You straight, bro? Those type of connections or Wi-Fi is, is something that only having the experience in the game can share that. And I did not want that opportunity to be missed because I was fighting so much more off the field that on the field was just a playground. That was my place of refuge. You can't talk to me, reporter, while I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm at peace, blah, 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 blah. And every time I ran, I ran with, 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 with a vengeance. I wanted to hurt somebody because I was hurt. And I used it as a way to give me my edge. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.